In this video, I'll be putting the iRig Pro I.O. to the test yet again, but with a different kind of guitar. Let's slap it a bass. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. In the last few videos, I've been checking this one out, the iRig Pro I.O. I've recorded some guitars and I've recorded some keys and now I'm going to record some bass guitar to test this one out because bass guitar can generate a lot of noise and if you've got a bad quality interface, it can really sound bad. So if we can get some good bass sound out of this one, that's what we want to check out here. So let's jump in now, get some set up and get recording. Now I did show the complete setup in the guitar video, so I'm not gonna go into a heap of detail, but let's quickly just get our guitar plugged in here. So what we need to do is grab our bass guitar, plug in a guitar cable into one end, and we'll pop that to the side there. And then we need to grab the iRig Pro I.O. here and put the guitar cable into the other end there, and that's good to go there. So our guitar's connected. We now need to connect this up to our iPhone or our iPad ready to record. So we're gonna grab our iRig and our little DIN connector cable here, plug that end in there, and this end is a lightning connection that's now going to go into our iOS device, which we already have here, ready to go, set up, running GarageBand. So we're just gonna plug in the lightning cable into the lightning socket, like so, and then our iRig is gonna to come to life. It's going to say, yep, we've got our red power light on there and our blue light saying that we're connected and we're good to go. So what we can now do is actually play our bass line right here into GarageBand. There's a couple of things we need to do around dialing the gain, which we'll do at the start, and then we'll go ahead and record and see what sort of sound we can get. Okay, we are all set up down here and ready to record. So we're plugged in and here is what our screen looks like here in GarageBand. So here's my song ready to play along with. We'll just come in here. It sounds like this at the moment. What's the matter with people these And yes, I have been using this song in a lot of demos lately, but that's because it's a song I'm working on. Now, what we need to do is hit the plus button here in the bottom left corner, and we're gonna go to the amp sim here. We're gonna tap on bass, and let's dial in a bass preset here. I kind of like the little helper. So here we've got the little helper dialed in with his default settings, and nothing's coming through. Why? Because we haven't turned monitoring on. So we're gonna tap in the top left corner. We're gonna turn on monitoring, and now, we have our monitoring, we have our bass coming through there. Now what I'm gonna do is dial up on the actual iRig, you saw this before, the actual uh, sound here to make sure that we're gonna get a decent healthy signal coming through here. So if we turn that up, you can see there, we're, we're starting to distort, well you can hear, we're starting to get a little bit too much come through. Turn it down a little bit. Around about there I think is good. And that's at uh, seven on our um, on our gain dial here. So if you were playing along at home or you have your own iRig, that's where I've dialed this to at the time of this recording. Now let's come back here and just turn our volume up because when I'm recording an instrument, I like the volume to be up high. And you can see there that we're... Yeah, so we're looking like we're about right. We need to go back in. Now, this is one of the frustrations with GarageBand. You need to be in the actual instrument to to actually be able to hear it. So, why don't we now hit record, we'll go back to the start of the track. Now I do have a bass track on here already, which is my Liverpool bass, so I'm just gonna come and find that one. It is already solo, that's cool. Uh, so we won't hear that bass sound as well as this one. All the other instruments are there ready to go. Let's hit record and record some bass. Okay, that was all right. The take was okay. I'm reasonably happy with that. Small problem, I um, had the microphone on, so you would have been hearing the noise here as well as the noise of that sound. So let's try a take two of this and see if we can turn the mic down and even play that a little bit better. What's the matter with people these days? They're trying to be something more. What's the 
Okay, that felt pretty good. Let's go back and take a look and a listen at this bass part. So bass parts are always going to look a little bit uh, lower on the waveform, a bit like that. So let's just solo this and take a quick listen in a section here. Turn it down a little bit. Sounds pretty good. Let's bring it back into the mix. Dead end job and missing out on what is real. And we're trying to have a. Outward veneer to make other people. So. The, the tone aside, because I'm just using the GarageBand uh, default tone, or one of the default tones here in GarageBand, I'm actually really impressed with this for a couple of reasons. There's really low noise, so signal to noise ratio is really good on this in terms of the actual bass sound. And then the other thing is there's no bleed whatsoever, so nothing is coming through. And sometimes with the analog devices, the iRig devices and others, you do get a lot of bleed coming through. So that's not present here. And I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality of that sound. Monitoring the audio was not nice and loud through the headphones and yeah I can just see myself playing guitar and bass using the iRig Pro IO so overall conclusion pretty impressed with this one so far and I'll definitely be continuing to use it and try it out on my guitars and basses for this song and future songs as well. So there you have it. In my view, another tick for the iRig Pro IO. I'm really liking this interface. I think I'm getting some good sounds. It's easy to use. It's convenient to set up, which is important. You don't have to plug in a bunch of stuff. There's like two cables and then you're away. And yeah, the quality is just actually really impressive. So if you are interested in this one, there are some links down in the description to where you can pick one up if you're in the market for a new interface. There's two more videos about this device. Link down below. You can also subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you on the next video.